Yo, yo, guys, call me safe from off targets 5 I'm prepping. In this video, I'm going to be going on my urban survival kit. So, recently, I did a video on my urban get home bag. I actually, in that video, also called that an urban survival kit. It's technically still an urban survival kit, but that one is set up to get me back to my house, to get me from, let's say, the other side of town, like I said in that video, to get me back to my house safely and as quick as possible. The point of this kit is if I'm in some kind of an urban environment, so a big city or something like that. If you was in America, maybe you was in somewhere like New York, it's a massive urban environment. But this is or somewhere in the UK, it could be in London, Manchester, Liverpool, one of them big cities. So this kit is purely set up for the fact that I'm going to be in an urban environment for a long time. It could be because of civil unrest and riots and everything just hit the fans. There's no control by the government. Everything's hit the fans, some kind of apocalypse, Mad Max scenario. It could be because there's been some kind of foreign invasion and maybe all the roads are cut off either because of patrols from military forces, uh, from foreign military forces, or from contaminants, maybe they've dropped some kind of chemical agent on location that I might want to bug out to, and I kind of think in my other eye, my best bet might be at the moment to stay in the urban environment, there's a lot of cover, a lot of shelter, a lot of supplies for me to get to, that's one of the, that's one of the advantages about an urban environment, a lot of the food and water, which are the two pretty much main things your body, body is going to need, are going to be readily available either in shops or houses. So this kit is set for a long term stay in an urban environment. I think I've covered all my bases and we'll go over it now. So that's the difference between the urban get home bag and the urban survival kit. Both fairly similar, you see some of the similar items in here, but this one's set for a long term stay in an urban environment, just to cut that short, even though I told, told the long story first. Um, so let's pretty much get into it. So before we get into the bag, I'm just going to go over a couple of items I'd probably have on me. Uh, so we have my mobile phone, obviously for as long as this is in use, I can use it to contact people and other things like that. As well as that, obviously I'm going to have my wallet, this has got personal information, cash, credit cards, bank cards, whatever you want to call them. And a few other little personal items, no reason to go into them too much, they are something that I'll have on me, but not something that I actively think would help me in any situation, except for maybe the cash. <coughs> Sorry about that, I've got a bit of a dodgy throw at the moment, guys. Um... So we'll go over what's on the outside first, then we will go to the inside. So we'll go over the we'll go over some of the big items, but I'll go over all the little items that are on the outside first. So first of all at the front here, we just have a few items at the front on the old dog lead collar thing I've got. It's just an old dog lead uh, clip. I thought, do you know what I can put some stuff on that? So took that off obviously it's just there, just on that with a zip tie, so it gives me something to secure stuff with. Uh, so first of all we have my emergency whistle, so for some reason they need to signal either the people I'm with or signal for help if it's a really dire situation, the signal and whistle. Then here we have a couple of zip tie handcuffs. Basically the point of these in an urban environment is just if there is some kind of threat and maybe I've subdued this threat. So the person who's trying to attack me, I've actually subdued them and they're not a threat anymore and I don't want to cause harm to them. I don't want to actively protect myself in any lethal way. But I just want to basically make them not a threat to me in a situation like I could put this on them, you know, and maybe after I've knocked them out or before I've knocked them out if I had to do that. And then they will just basically not be a threat to me directly anymore. <coughs> so, a couple of sips high handcuffs there for them reasons. So, on the top here, we have a cordage bracelet. Basically, it's just a thingy. I don't think it's proper paracord. It might be. I've not took it off. But basically, there's probably about... I don't know, seven, maybe ten meters of cordage there, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, but I've got two of them, I've got one in that colour, and I've got another one there in bright orange, which we'll go over when I get to it. So now let's talk about what's on this side. So a few items here. So first of all, here we have an emergency alarm or a rape alarm, people call this. At the moment I've got the thing in, so if I have to pull that out, obviously if it was an environment, I'd already have that, but that's just a little thing, so it cuts off the power so it doesn't make a noise in case. This accidentally comes out. If you pull that out without that little piece of plastic there, basically make a loud noise. And obviously in a situation where it's the end of the world, people might not come to your aid, but this could also be effective for a couple of other things. Uh, if, if you've got someone directly attacking you just by pulling that, obviously you, you know it's coming, so then that will disorientate and why you're trying to defend yourself. So that's kind of the point I've got it here. But the other reason I've got this with an item that I'll show you in a little bit uh, is with a bit of nylon thread and a couple of nails, you could pretty much, if you find a building you think secure, uh, you find a door, obviously only have one alarm, so you'd find one, a, a rock, big England words, you'd find a room with one door and you could basically set this up with some duct tape or simply put a, 
uh, one of the nails through there, I have two nails, and then you'd simply tie a bit of thread either from the inner strands of paracord, which I've got some proper paracord in the UFC later, or I've got some nylon thread, so basically I tie the nylon thread, tie it off, tie it to the wall, you know, hit the nail in if I haven't got something to secure the nylon thread to, or whatever other cord that you might use to secure this, and then basically when they open that door, that will go off and have a big alarm warning me that someone's actually coming in. So that gives me just that security that if I'm in a room, I have... I have an alarm system, so if someone tries to break in, and it's something that pretty much will not fail, and yeah, so an emergency alarm or a rape alarm. Obviously, I don't think in my case that would be majorly effective. Uh, I don't really see anyone coming after me with a pants down. Uh, I'm not making that a joke, I do think that that is a very serious situation, but I'm just saying personally, as a grown man, I don't really see that being a potential threat for me. So I've mainly got that too, so, so basically... Storing takes someone if attacking me or if I'm in a room, give me some kind of alert if someone's trying to get into that room. I have other ways to basically secure that room, which I'll show you in a little bit. So next for here, we have my handheld receiver. You see this a lot on my fingers. Like I say, I don't really want to buy multiple of these. So I just have the one here that I kind of personally thought was the best one. I can also pick up radio stations on this as well. can scan for channels, can already have pre-programmed them with the other two handheld receivers they have. As well as that, I do have a long-range antenna. I'm not going to get it all out, but yeah. So there's a long range antenna, I basically clip that. I do have the small little antenna in here as well, and there's just a wiring to connect that. Uh, and I think the only right I'm actually having in here is just a couple of trash bags because they take up no room, and pretty much I'm not even going to notice that. It's got some decent padding there. <coughs> Sorry about that in the back of that. Uh, so yeah. Oh, if I didn't mention the bag, is a 25 litre Molly bag. Uh, I pretty much got it off eBay, it cost me about £14. Uh, it was actually on a deal though, so I think it was about 25 uh, pounds I got it for, but yeah, it's a 25 litre backpack. It's decent. I don't really think it's waterproof, but again, them bin bags could also be used for waterproofing. Uh, it's a really decent little bag, and it is in black python camouflage. Uh, I was going to get something just in plain black, but then I thought, do you know what? It kind of looks nice, and it, does, it doesn't really look like proper camouflage. It's not really what you associate with camouflage. So someone might think I've just got a night bag or something anyway with a thingy. But at the same time, I want this to be intimidating, so I'm not really bothered about it. Not wanting to send out in an urban, an urban situation, I'm going to be stuck in the environment for a long time. I want to be as intimidating as possible to basically stop people coming near me. Me being quite a big guy kind of works in my favour for that situation. I'm going to make a video sometime in the future. I know I've said this before, but I'm, I'm planning a video out now. Another target talk video about intimidation in a survival or a bug out situation. We'll go over that in the future though. So, <coughs> sorry about my throat, guys. Uh, yeah, so there's the other paracord bracelet. Or cordage bracelet in a bright orange. I've got one in like a just a dark olive green and one there in bright colour. That could also be used for signalling. I do have a little signalling kit in here. We'll go over later as well. Uh, so <coughs> sorry about that again. So now we'll go over the tools. There is another tool inside the bag that we'll go over later. So first of all, yeah, I have a crowbar or pry bar, whatever you want to call it. So the point of this is basically to get into buildings. Either I'm being chased by a potential threat and it could be more than one person, so it might not be logical to defend myself I might actively just have to get away as quick as possible this obviously could also be used as self-defense time like I say normal situations don't condone that though but basically this could just be used to get me into a building either to get supplies hopefully the building's not occupied if it was I'd probably stay far away because I want to stay away from people as much as possible uh, but yeah but if I needed to get some supplies also can be used to pull hooks out and other things like that and not hooks nails sorry so a pry bar uh, speaking of tools here, this is something that maybe wouldn't be on, but the point of this in an urban environment is two things. Obviously, first of all, it's intimidating. It can be used for self-defense. Get out there. Obviously, yes, there's two clips. Special moment there. So, here we have some kind of like... It doesn't really look like a normal axe, and it's not, but uh, this will definitely be effective for two reasons. I've got this in an urban environment. <coughs> first of all, as a tool, as a demolition tool... If I need to get into a building and maybe the pry bar isn't an option, maybe I need to get through some drywall, something like that pretty much with this and the hammer there, it would be fairly effective of getting me through that wall or through a light wooden door. So not obviously it's not I don't think it'd get me through a metal door, but something like that. It also can be used, like I said, with that uh, alarm system. It can be used, the hammer can be used to nail in them nails that are setting up. So that's why I decided to put this in. I haven't really found a use for this. I've had it for a bit now, but with this kit, I was going to get some kind of demolition tube. Then I thought, when I was looking at him, do you know what? This would probably do the trick since we already have the pry bar. Pretty much the only thing that they had that this didn't, do you know, being obviously had an axe head and a hammer, uh, was basically a pry bar, and I already had one of them ready anyway. So there. And also, it could be used for self defense. Obviously, it's very intimidating. 
But like I said, in normal everyday situations, don't condone them actions. But in a survival or an apocalypse situation, a bug out situation, whatever you want to call it, uh, would be fairly intimidating and effective for self defense as well. So that's that item. Uh, I think that's everything on the outside except for the two pouches. We'll go over them now. Over this one first and we'll spin it around. Not clip something off. I forgot this one got through. There we go. So this here is pretty much just where I keep my water bottle. So I do have the Osprey water bottle. Uh, I did do a video recently on the gas mask that is in here, which is the Avon, Avon FM12 gas mask. Go over that a little bit more. So in here, I've just got my stove for cooking. I've got my water bottle. There. With the attach attachment for my drinking straw so if there isn't contamination I can drink about a litre of water out of this without getting it contaminated or risking contamination to myself and then we just have the cooking bowl this my one did also come with another plastic pot like this but I didn't see the point of adding it because I couldn't really fit it all in that bag and I don't really know why I need a plastic bowl so that's that <coughs> put that off to the side There, and then there's just the molly pouch, or pouch there. Uh, and I'll just see if I've gone over, we'll just move a few of these items off to the side so they're not in the way. Now, before I get into the rest of the items, uh, in there. So next of all, obviously, we'll go over my trauma kit. I have done a review on this item as well. But... It's not really easy to rip off. Probably we'll just unclip it in an actual situation, but you can rip it off if you needed to. So here is my first aid kit. I have added a few items in, so I'll kind of go over it real quick now. On the outside, obviously, I've added in a couple. I've added a couple of pouches. So I've got ouch pouch there, basically, so I know it's first aid. And I've got a blacked out Union Jack there. Uh, first of all, we've got a tourniquet on the outside. Obviously, that can be used for any severe wounds to your arms or legs. It basically means you need to cut off your circulation to keep you alive. Uh, so in there, I'm only going to give you a quick overall. I've added some more plasters, uh, some more plasters, some more alcoholic wipes, just some basic little boo-boo things. Uh, I added in a couple of extra bandages to here. Yeah, I think I added in two. So there's four bandages altogether. I uh, added some, some of that liquid glue. I added in a smaller one because I didn't really need that much, but there's some of that liquid glue basically can be used to glue yourself, also can be used as normal glue as well I think it can, maybe the one's the one that I'm thinking of but basically just some glue uh, permanent marker is already in there got a couple of chem lights, can be used for other survival purposes but yeah, pretty much we've got stuff in there like an Israeli bandage medical shears, loads of good stuff I've done a review on this if you want to go <coughs> sorry about that, if you want to go see what's in here more a little bit more in depth with a review on my channel I'm going to not go over this item too much but yeah, so a trauma kit or first aid pouch, whatever you want to call it uh, so I think that is everything on the outside let me just take that off so it doesn't get broken by me blindness on this side and the same with the handheld receiver it's always so awkward to get off this clip I'm just going to So we've got a lot of items in here. Let's say I, my kind of plan for this when I was making it was to be a little bit lightweight. Uh, yeah, didn't really stick to that too much. But yeah, it's me. I'm not going to go too lightweight. But it all fits in and it doesn't really weigh too much. But I'm already kind of looking into getting a bigger bag for it. So we'll go from this pouch to that pouch or this compartment to that compartment to that compartment to that compartment. So first of all, in this one, we have the gel box, gel blocks for my stove. Just two in there. Can add more if I wanted to, but that should be enough. Uh, next thing we've got here. So this is my little signaling kit. We'll go over this now. Other than the other ways I've showed you that I can signal, these are pretty much visual signals. So first of all, in here we have a signaling mirror. So from on the top of some high-rise building or some high building, and there's a helicopter, which you may be getting me out of the situation or if I need to signal for help for other means or after signal someone I'm with pretty much we just have that there and then here we just have a couple of smoke cakes 
So basically, if you don't know what these are, these are pretty much mainly used in photography. I was going to get uh, airsoft smoke grenades, so like smoke bombs, basically. So they, they'd be a big smoke thing, but I thought, you know, they're a bit big, and I don't really see where I'd be able to put them, and I don't wouldn't really want to get caught with them on me in a normal situation, because this is maybe a kit I'd have in the back of my car. Uh, so really, what I've got in here is two smoke cakes. So basically, I put these down. I've got one in red and one in orange. Uh, so a bit different colours, but they both pretty much would mean the stretch. You know, orange looks like red, red's red, obviously. That's an, that's the national colour of distress. That's what you want to. That's how you'd let someone know you was in danger. Um, so pretty much, I'd put these down, light, and it'd go off for about. I think it was about 15 minutes. It said it might be a bit more, maybe a bit less. Uh, I could maybe cut them in half if I, you know, didn't want to use all of it once. But obviously, just a couple of little smoke cakes there, basically. Light them with a lighter and they go off. Uh, so next in here, there is. Oh, we'll, go, we'll go over the items in a second. So here, this is my EDC pouch. Obviously, I think a few my EDC items I've already shown you. But in here, I'll go over it real quick because I've gone over this lot. Personal face mask, tactical pen, lighter, charging, stuff, a little power bank, wires to charge my phone, headphone adapter for mobile phone, uh, secondary flashlight, hand sanitizer, battery for my flashlight, a little bit of duct tape. Basically, this is my EDC. I'm not going to go over that too much, but yeah, so I've gone over that a lot. Pretty much not changed really at all. Uh, in here, also, we have my knife. So this is just one I got with uh, a survival kit, I don't really know the name of it, but it's basically just a flick knife. Uh, basically I just wanted a cutting tool, it's not really intended for any kind of major cutting abilities, but for small stuff, and plus this one does have a seatbelt cutter and glass breaker on it, so that's a good thing as well. Uh, but it does lock in place, so if I had to use it in self defence for a worst case scenario, I do have that I do have that option, it's going to be nice and secure, like I said in every situation, don't condone carrying knives or anything to cause harm to other people. But it does just give me that ability in a worst case scenario. And it does lock in place. Obviously, this isn't a UK legal carry, so I won't recommend carrying this in everyday situations. If you if you were looking for a legal carry knife, and I'm talking in a, in, an, in a, an environment where you'd be allowed to, and you know, obviously not to you're not actively causing it as a defense, and you're not actively carrying it, sorry, as a defense item, you're just carrying it for uh, other purposes for a small cutting tool, which is pretty much intended purpose for this. This one isn't a UK legal carry. But like I said, this is in the apocalypse. This is when I'd have this kit. I will not just have it as my normal get home bag. So, a small little flip knife. Uh, in here as well, I've got a Silcock key. Basically, as someone recently commented on one of my videos saying that this isn't useful in the British environment because we don't have spigots. Spigots, one of, well, I'm saying it wrong or right there. On the outside of buildings, but personally near me, I know a free buildings where I can use this, industrial buildings. Uh, and other than that, this can be used to gather water inside of buildings from either radiators, uh, plumbing, plumbing equipment, all stuff like that. This can be used to gather water. So even if you haven't got the main thing that people in America use it for, uh, you can still use it. So you can have water. Here we just have 10 purification tablets. So I can use it to fill out that bottle. I think that's everything in there. Let me just make sure, guys. Before we move on to the next pouch. Yep, no small items at the bottom now. So next in this pouch, oh, first of all, there is a Union Jack Velcro patch there. Same as the one that's on my first aid kit. So first of all, here, yeah, like I said, with that uh, emergency alarm or rape alarm, I do have the couple of nails and some nylon thread there, so I can use them when I'm inside a building if I find a room with one door, like I said. To secure some kind of alarm system, so if someone happens to come in, I would know. That's there. As well in here, I do have just a simple little headlight, so I find free option. Got a few little different settings on it, nothing special, but would just be perfect if I was in a room or in an area where it was dark and I just needed a low light thing to do some to get something out of my bag or to just move around the environment where I need a low light situation. And then in here, I think that's everything in that pouch. Yep. So last of all, here we have a monoscope or telescope, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just get it out. So I was going to add a small pair of binoculars in, but then I thought, you know what, this has got a bit more higher range. It's also got a little compass on it. I don't know if it's accurate. I noticed that when I got it. But basically, in here, simply... How do you, I'm pulling off wrong, aren't I? Just get your finger in there. So here we have a monoscope. So simply, I'll look through that, scout an area, or I can use it to see for potential threats or maybe potential rescue. A lot of things you could use this for, either a monoscope or a pair of binoculars, whichever one you want to add in. It does zoom in and all that as well. It's a decent little one. 
And also, if you do have a stand like for hunting or whatever, you can use it with that, with the little shuffings on there. But I personally didn't need it because I've not got it for that purpose. But yeah, so a way to be able to scour an area. <coughs> so let's go into the next compartment. So we've got light and rooms in here, we'll get them out one at a time. So first of all, yeah, I think we have some toilet roll. Obviously what that can be used for, can be used for to blow my nose. Can be used to wipe my batty or my bum. Sorry about calling it a batty then. Uh, but yeah, basically toilet roll or tissue, whatever you call it. Uh, in here, then last, now let's get out my personal protective equipment or PPE. Uh, so first of all there, I just have a couple of industrial masks. I think they're meant to be N95, but... Oh, it does actually say N95 on the side there, so they might actually be decent enough. There's two in there. Yeah, and here we have my balaclava a face mask thing. Uh, it's the same camouflage as this. Uh, it looks a bit different, obviously, because it's on a different material, but just a black python head head mask, balaclava, whatever you want to call it. A pair of protective goggles, like science goggles, but basically are decent. It will stop any uh, stuff from getting in my eyes, like dust or any debris or maybe... Uh, low velocity shrapnel, some stuff like that. Uh, second of all, we have a uh, cheap old punch, or pretty much just if a waterproofing can be used to waterproof myself. I think I have another one in here, I can't remember if I put two in now, but yeah, so a clear white waterproof poncho. Uh, speaking of PPE as well, I've crossed all the items with PPE. We just have a pair of simple, cheap old working gloves, little gardening gloves, pretty much just there if I need to move debris or anything like that. Uh, next of all, I've got over this tool, so here we just have a small pair of uh, bolt cutters, I mean I don't really think these would be good for cutting the bolts, but like wire cutters, so obviously the chain link fence, and I was trying to get in somewhere to maybe get supplies or to get to safety, just give me that option, small little wire cutter there, as you can see, nothing major, but we'll do the trick. Uh, next of all, another item to help me with staying safe. In a room, like I said, without a signalling thing, the alarm system. Uh, here we just have a doorstop, and you're probably thinking, why have we added that? Uh, this is an item that I've, not, that I've not seen anyone else personally add in in any urban survival kits that I've researched on. So basically, the point of this, when I was at school, I remember these all the time being on every door. I remember one time there was this kid, it was funny, it was not funny, I don't think he was too hurt, but basically he was running into a room and he, he smacked his head, he had a big cut down the side there because it was simply just a doorstopper there that he didn't know about. And yeah, himself, but yeah, but pretty much that can just be used to basically keep a door shut so I'm safe. Uh, jam it under a door, basically, or you could jam it in the sides if you can get it under the door. Uh, so we'll go over this next. So, in here, I've just got it all in this pouch, so it's all thingy. So, this is my basically illumination and other little small electrical things. So, in here, we have a decent flashlight, got SOS built in, got strobe effect, got three different brightness settings. I've uh, got a zoom thing there, it's a decent one, it's waterproof uh, and you can charge it directly so I won't have to have some separate things so I can just put my charger, the same one I use for my phone in here with either the power bank that's in my EDC or the one that's in here that will get out in a second pretty much a flashlight and a decent one because I'm in an urban environment uh, so there's the power bank, a solar one, nothing special, cost me about £8 but it is decent and apparently it is waterproof uh, there's the antenna for my handheld receiver. I also keep my multi tool in here. I've gone over this multiple times, but yeah, just some Highlander multi tool there, so I'm not going to go over that too much. Part of me, you see that. Uh, everything in there. Oh, and there's the charger for the uh, uh, flashlight there as well. A little waterproof thing. Uh, here we have a lockpick set. Uh, I've recently got this, I need to practice a lot more, but at the moment I can do with a little practice lock. So yeah, lock picks that obviously can be used as another thing to get you inside of a building, or inside of a locked area to keep you safe or to get supplies. And uh, that's everything inside of there. Uh, in here now, I think. I think I've got a few little things to go over. So in here I just have a water filter method, so water filter straw there and a containment, another water containment method. Pretty much the purpose of this is just to get clean water into my system if I need to. Obviously being in an urban environment a lot of the water is actually going to be readily available. So this could be pretty much maybe be a bit more effective than in some kind of suburban environment or wilderness environment. But yeah, so a water filter system there I guess. 
So now, speaking a little bit about wilderness, I do just have a few little wilderness items in here. I'll get out now. Just make sure I've got everything out of there. Yep. So this is a little knife sharpener for my, a little stone sharpener, sorry, for my knife or my hatchet, or my axe, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so a little sharpener for my knife. I think I do have another one in here as well, but that's just a little uh, backup one. Uh, so there's a wire saw pretty much if you end up in a wilderness environment which gives me a way other than that axe which like I said I don't really know will be too effective in cutting down a tree. Uh, it does just give me the ability to basically gather firewood to shelter building material if you end up in a, uh, a suburban or a wilderness environment. Uh, then here we have a little magnesium fire starter. See there. So a fire starting method as well other than the lighter that's the only other one I have in here. Like I said, this is set up for an environment, but I do just want some little wilderness items. Uh, let me just push all this off to the front a little bit there. You know what I'm like, guys, when I do these videos, I'm not really majorly organising where I'm going to put everything. To the side. There. So now we're going to go over the main compartment with probably the, maybe not, I don't know if it's got the most in, but it's got the biggest items in. Uh. So a lot of items to go over here, let's just say that. Oh, I don't really know how I'm going to do this, but yeah. I'm going to do the best way in it, right. So as you can see, there's a lot in, we'll go over the, uh, Bigger items first, and we'll go over the smaller ones. So first of all, we'll get this out. So there is 15 meters of five strand, uh, sorry, seven strand 550 cord. So really good cordage. Uh, we have a small tarp. There basically, if I'm in an urban environment and maybe I'm pinned on the reef, the point of this and that is basically it can be used for shelter, but it also can be used as a rain catching device because obviously water is still going to be pretty important to your survival in either scenario or environment. So a small tarp. Uh, we have some duct tape, pretty much just sit tied down there so it you know, stays down and compact a little bit more. There. Uh, so was actually meant to be more zip ties, I'm trying to remember where they are now, I think, I think they're at the back actually. Just make sure. Uh, so I remember there being a lot of zip ties and now I can't remember where they are. Yeah, we'll find them, they're probably here somewhere. I'm just being blind. Uh, so anyway, so as well in here we have a 24 hour ration pack, so pretty much just a large amount of food in there, giving me sustenance. Uh, as well in here we do have my a one fm 12 gas mask, I've done a review on this if you want to see more details on this, but the main reason I got it was a drinking straw and because it's easy, and if you're going to find any filters in the UK they're probably going to fit this gas mask, it's 40mm NATO if you want to know, so there's the gas mask. There's my one FP5 filter having this. I could maybe add a secondary filter, but I don't need to. Oh, here are the zip ties. So there's about 40 zip ties there, all secured together with another zip tie. Yeah, so a lot of zip ties can be used for repairing kit, can be used for uh, more handcuffs, makeshift handcuffs, can be used for loads of different things, securing items down. Uh, and here, if I am with a vehicle, I simply just have a siphoning pipe here to siphon fuel. Plus, be used to siphon water as well. Uh, as well in here we do have some batteries, so we have four AAA batteries, I have four AA batteries, uh, I have a spare wire for my phone, I think I've got, oh, sorry not for my phone, for my, I know this is something I forgot, but basically another charging wire. Uh, we have a small little compass just in case I need one, nothing special, and yep yeah, that is everything in that compartment there, Let's put the mines off to the side. So the big items now I've got everything that's in here. First of all, this is a sewing kit. In here, pretty much, I'll show you what I've got. I don't know if I've done anything to secure it. There it is. So this is one that uh, was bought uh, online, but in here, pretty much, I have a small pair of scissors. That's the item that come with it. Uh, some sewing thread, some sewing needles, some uh, measuring tape. But the some items added in was a load of elastic bands and a load of range bands as well for securing items down and stuff like that. Uh, in here for filtering or for other things that I might need it for is just a simple bandana, good to have in any kit. If you, maybe you could also have a shimog or shimog, I think I'm saying that right, or wrong, sorry. 
Uh, obviously, band down is pretty much just a small one of that. Uh, it's cotton, so we can use it to fill out water as well. Oh, there's a secondary poncho. That one is in a yellow colour, basically, so it can be used for signalling. But it can also be used for waterproofing as well. Uh, my EDC first aid kit I just put in here. It's just got some plasters and stuff in there. Some more plasters. And some... Sorry about that. Some painkillers. Oh, also, I did add, add in some painkillers to my main uh, first aid kit there. Uh, we just have some... A, a fabric here, basically. can be used for filtering out water again. Or can be used for cleaning kit. Uh, is my main knife sharpener pretty much there just a simple sharpener knife sharpener uh, and then here some wire mesh that's awkward sorry some mesh wire stuff I don't know uh, so here is a little multi-tool spork fork thing if you, whatever you want to call it so they come apart like this and basically this is a way to open cans does have a can opener on it you can see it there there's a bottle opener get it out or a cork and screw whatever you call it I don't know don't really drink much wine or whatever you would need to drink that so we'll thing in on this side I do have another blade it can be used as a blade obviously and a spoon for eating as well so a wait utensil a uh, permanent marker a big permanent marker in black and uh, then we just have a small hygiene kit in here so toothbrush toothpaste some body wash or soap. Um, that's just a random sip type thing. Uh, so that is pretty much everything inside of this kit, guys. Uh, I think I've really made an in-depth kit with this one personally. But if you have any comments of stuff you'd add in, you have any comments at all, just let me know in the description down below. Obviously, leave, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, basically, really just hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.